These are Dairon's runes, such as were used of old in Moria, said Gandalf. Here is written in the tongues of men and dwarves, Balin, son of Fundin, lord of Moria. He is dead then, said Frodo. I feared it was so. Gimli cast his hood over his face. The company of the ring stood silent beside the tomb of Balin. Frodo thought of Bilbo and his long friendship with the dwarf, and of Balin's visit to the Shire long ago. In that dusty chamber in the mountains, it seemed a thousand years ago, and on the other side of the world. Greetings and well met, my friends. Yoiston here, and I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle-earth. Today we will be starting a new series called What Happened? Within this series, we will explore specific events, quests, and stories that happened in the lore of Tolkien's Middle-earth. We will start by looking at what happened to Balin's expedition in Moria. Our friends who make Lord of the Rings jewelry over at Papillon reached out to me with the desire to do a giveaway, so please stay tuned to the end of the video for more information about that. I'll also link some related articles and videos in the description and cards above to help contextualize our lore within this video. Without further ado, let's begin our tale. In the year 2989 of the Third Age, Balin, son of Fundin, who had been a part of Thorin's company, approached King Dain Ironfoot of Erebor about an expedition into Moria. I've always imagined that Balin had been enheartened by the success of the quest of Erebor, and he thought to reclaim Khazad Dûm in such a way that was similar. He also sought the Ring of Thror, which was the last known ring of the Seven given by Sauron to the dwarves of the Second Age. He knew not its true fate, and thought it was within Moria, for Thror had been slain there by Azog many years before. Dain counseled against this endeavor, but Balin went forth anyway, and set out soon after. With Balin went many of his kin, such as the dwarves Owen and Ori, who had also joined in the quest of Erebor. Some other dwarves joined in as well, Flowey, Frar, Loni, Nali, and others. The dwarves came through the Eastern Way, slaying and driving off orcs from the Great Gates in the Dimril Dale. Flowey was slain by an arrow, but himself may have slain a mighty orc, and he was buried near Lake Miramir. But the dwarves pressed on, going all the way to the 21st Hall where they established themselves as a colony. Within these dark ruins, and amongst the legacies of the splendor of ancient times, Balin set himself up as the Lord of Moria in the Chamber of Mazarbul, the Chamber of Records. As the Book of Mazarbul told it, the dwarves marked pages with the numbers of years after their arrival, but many pages were missing. However, for five years, it seems the expedition thrived, for they found treasures of old, such as Mithril, Durin's axe, probably gold and a helm of some kind, and others. The Lord of the Rings Online does some really interesting stuff in their lore concerning Balin's company and Durin's axe especially, I should add. Anyway, it seems that sometime during those five years, Owen turned westwards and sought for the upper armories of the Third Deep, and possibly, from what I can gather from the displacement of words in the Book of Mazarbul, Owen was seeking his way westwards towards the doors of Durin. But these dwarves shared in the fate and doom of their forefathers, and until the coming of Durin the Seventh, Khazad Dûm would remain Moria, much to Gimli and every other dwarf's sorrow. The turning point came in the fifth year of the colony, in 2994. At this point in the Book of Mazarbul, the writing switched to the hand of Ori, who was versed in elvish script, and Gimli noted him as being a good and hasty writer. As Gandalf puts it, quote, he had ill tidings to record in a fair hand. End quote. It seems that on the 10th of November of that year, Balin had gone to look upon Lake Miramir alone, and an orc had shot him from behind a stone and mortally wounded him. The dwarves slew that orc, but he was one of many to come from a company who came up the Silverlode or Celebrant River. Balin was entombed in the chamber of Mazarbul, and his company was leaderless. Ori had written this account a day after Balin's death, and he continued by saying that the dwarves barred the gates against the orcs, and they might hold them long if, and it cuts to the words horrible and suffer. Going now to the last page of the Book of Mazarbul, Ori wrote of the final destruction of their company. Frar and Loni and Nali had fallen after the orcs took the second hall and the bridge of khazad -dûm. Now whether Ori's next writing was the same day and account as the one written one day after the death of Balin is speculative, and it is important, for Ori goes on to write that the waters at Westgate, meaning the doors of Durin in Holland or Aregion, had risen to the wall, 
and the Watcher in the Water had taken Owen. Concerning the chronology of this, if Ori was writing this whole account the day or even a few days after the death of Balin, then Owen may have died sometime before Balin, as it states he went five days ago. But if this was written even more time after, then Owen died after Balin. But I would assume the latter, that Balin died first. If Owen died indeed after Balin, then it may have been that Owen was or would have been made the new leader of the expedition due to being Balin's cousin and most direct kin in the company. Anyway, Owen had also fallen, but to the Watcher, and West Gate was held by the Watcher and his waters, while the Eastern Gates were held by the Orcs. The last page ends, reading, quote, We cannot get out. The end comes. Drums. Drums in the deep. They are coming. End quote. That is all we may gather from the Book of Mazarbu concerning the fate of the expedition, but there are a few ideas that I would like to speculate. One, it seems that Ori, the author of these pages of the book, was the last dwarf, or at least one of the last dwarves alive during the expedition, as he held himself in the chamber of Mazarbul, next to the grave of Balin for as long as he could. And second, there is an apparent and definite lack of a certain creature in the book of Mazarbul. Perhaps he is mentioned more in the pages that are missing, Durin's Bane. We must not forget that during these five years in Casa Doom, Balin's company was residing near a Balrog. Perhaps he was a part of the orcish force that slew Frar, Loni, and Nali during the Battle of the Second Hall. Years later, in 3018, Frodo would ask Glowin, Gimli's father, about Balin, for Bilbo and Balin had been good friends in years past, and the Council of Elrond would discuss the expedition. Until the coming of the Fellowship into Moria, none knew of the expedition's fate, but one could guess. During the Council, Gandalf confirms that Thror's ring, which Balin's company had searched for, was not in Moria, as Thror had given it to Thrain, his son, who had lost it to Sauron in Dul Guldur after he had been captured. The Fellowship then went into Moria in 3019 and found the Book of Mazarbul, and learned the same account as we ourselves got from the book, before Gandalf gave it to Gimli to eventually return to Dine Ironfoot at Erebor. The fate of the book is unknown, but I would imagine that Gimli carried it until he returned to Erebor sometime after the War of the Ring, where he would have given it to the new king under the mountain, Thorin Stonehelm. We are lucky indeed that the orcs and goblins cared not for the book, so at least we have some knowledge of Balin's expedition. In closing, although the time was not yet right for Balin and his folk to reclaim Moria, their account aided in warning the Fellowship about what was to come for them in the latter part of their journey through the dwarf realm of old. And perhaps, in some small way, Balin's expedition paved the way for Durin VII and his dwarves to reclaim Khazad-dûm sometime after the War of the Ring, likely in the Fourth Age. From what happened to Balin's expedition in Moria, we see that wisdom and counsel must temper our passions and ambitions, otherwise we may journey into folly, even with good intentions. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you all enjoyed today's video. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and share this with a friend. What are your thoughts on what happened to Balin's expedition in Moria? I find this story to be both tragic and honestly terrifying, for they did not know the breadth of their danger until it was too late. Let me know your thoughts, questions, additions, and corrections in the comments below. To support the channel, please look into our music channel, Facebook, Twitter, merch, and Patreon for a podcast and Discord server. Links for all of those are in the description below. Finally, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button to join the Men of the West and all of the free peoples today. We are doing a giveaway in this video as well. This giveaway is a Lord of the Rings ring from Papillon, and these pieces of jewelry are super cool. They seem to be high quality and they glow in the dark. A link to the website is in the description below. All you have to do to enter the giveaway is like the video, make sure you're subscribed, and leave a comment down below. Let me know your favorite thing about Tolkien's works and why. Then within an hour or so of this video going up, I'll reply to the winner, and I'll need you to message me on Facebook or Twitter or send me an email with your name, address, ring size, the ring that you'd like from the website that's valued under $60, and the glow color that you'd like. I'll leave that list of what I need in the description as well. Just message me within 24 hours or I will have to choose another winner. I'm so glad Papillon reached out with this giveaway because I think it's just a cool way to thank you all for watching my videos and for supporting me, and it's a nice shout out for those guys and their jewelry. Anyway, I'll see you all again next week with a new theory video. A poll for that is up on the community tab. Everyone, thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one, my great friends.